May the 5th, that fight is heating up. The tickets went on sale and I think they sold out, if I'm not mistaken. That would be a great night. You can watch that with us here exclusively on Box Nation. We'll be putting together a top quality team. Hey, we did it for Chisora and Klitschko. Didn't we? we delivered David Hay. That wasn't bad, was it? Of course, what happened after the fight is neither here nor there. Derek Chisora, by the way, is up in front of the board later this week. And I'm going to say it, I'm going to wish him luck. Hey. Why ever not? Now, this show is, well, it's original-ish, kind of, but there was once a great man who sat in a chair not dissimilar to my chair, who was in a studio not dissimilar to my studio. Well, actually, it was a million miles different to this studio, but the tone of the program, well, that was a million miles different as well. But you know what? I found this, and I just couldn't resist it. Take a look at this. This is how... It used to be. Six, five, four, three. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Harry Carpenter's Boxing Hour. If I had to name one boxer whose career would tell the story of the 60s in this country, there's only one answer, Henry Cooper. Apart from a few months at the end of 69, when he gave up his heavyweight title, Henry was champion throughout the decade, and I don't suppose I shall live to see another man equal that. Cooper's been a part of my life as long as I've been covering boxing. I must have first seen him, I suppose, round about 1951, when he was 17. I thought you might like to have a look at Henry as he was in those early amateur days, or as he would say, when he had hair. Cooper's in white here. He won the ABA light heavyweight title in 1952, and again in 53 and he was a member of the British Olympic team in Helsinki in 52 and was beaten in his first bout. A lot of his amateur success came while he was doing his national service in the Royal Army Ordnance Corps. He turned pro in 1954 with manager Jim Wicks and they've been together ever since. Did you know that Henry once modelled for a boxing character in a Daily Mail strip cartoon? He posed for the character of Gene Miller, a fighter in the Carol Day strip. Henry is unique in British boxing as a holder of three Lonsdale belts. You win a belt outright for every three successful fights for the title. And this is how Henry won his. He took the title from Brian London in January 59. He then defended it three times consecutively against the Welshman Joe Erskine from 1959 to 62. After that, he beat Dick Richardson in 1963. His second Lonsdale belt came when he again beat Brian London in 1964. Then came two challenges from the Midlands, first from Johnny Prescott in 1965 and from Jack Bodell in 1967. Now, did you know that between 1960 and 69, British boxers fought for the world title at all the eight principal weights, fly to heavy? We had three winners, too. Walter McGahn, the little Scot, won the flyweight championship. Howard Winston of Wales won the featherweight title, and we shall be seeing Winston later in this programme. And, of course, the irrepressible Terry Downs won the world middleweight title from Paul Pender of Boston. I first met Downs in 1957, when he came back from America after serving in the US Marines. We sat in his grandmother's basement in Paddington, and this extraordinary youngster, he was still an amateur, solemnly told me that British boxers were nothing, and that when he turned pro, he'd be British champion within 20 fights. Well, I went away and wrote a piece for the Daily Mail, taking young Master Downs to task for being so cocky. He turned pro, and he was British middleweight champion in exactly 20 fights. Yes, actually, we might be taking young Master Downs to task soon. We're going to be reaching out to his wife to try and get Terry Eva on the show. We might go and visit him. i tell you one thing I did love about that. I mean, the studio was glorious. It was absolutely fantastic. The leather chair. Have a look at that. But look, he's got a bottle of whiskey on the table. And what I really like, well, he's got, I mean, he's got like a paperweight, some sort of Dutch woman that delivers cheese, the Huda woman. Okay, he's got a couple of books in case he fancies just having a little read. I suppose it's when they were showing the pictures, when they were showing the stills, maybe Harry was just going to have a little thumb through, read a couple of chapters of Jane Eyre. And, but what I love the most is the phone. Okay, this is pre-recorded TV. 
right? It's over stylized, it's edited to death, but no, let's stick a sexy phone in. Someone's obviously said, let's put a phone in, because those phones are going to catch on, you know. I just love the idea that Harry's got a phone, and halfway through talking about Henry Cooper and Terry Downs, he says, oh, excuse me, hold on. Yes, dear. I shall be home about five. Oh, you've just got to love it. It's absolutely brilliant. Keep the, keep the emails and keep the text coming. This is coming from Natalie Wallace. She says, I can't believe Groves has pulled out. Oh, he's not just let Anderson down, but the boxing fans and the undercards who make their living out of a tough sport. Well, first of all, Natalie, he's pulled out because of an injury. That's the first and foremost thing. And as Kevin Marie said in my interview, it could have been Kenny Anderson picking up an injury this week and it could have been Kenny Anderson with the doctor certificates the medical confirmation okay so that's the first and foremost thing it's not like he's pulled out and there's anything any doubt or suspicion he's pulled out he's injured and Harry Maud I hope that's close enough pronunciation Harry thanks for sending this into bunts at boxnation.com he says Steve O'Meara is not fighting Bradley Price this Friday I've only just bought my tickets Listen, Harry, not this week because I haven't got time. <clears throat> but excuse me, but next week I will have information, I promise you, on what people can do if they bought tickets. There were several shows coming up and there were lots of tickets sold. People like Billy Morgan sell a lot of tickets. Frank Bruglioni, Steve O'Meara, they sell a lot of tickets. So there will be thousands of fans out there tuning in tonight or watching it in the week, trying to work out what they can do with their tickets. I will, when I get information, I'll let you know, okay? I don't have the information right now. It's all a little bit, it's still a little bit up in the air. It's, 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 it's very raw and, and, and it's just a, it's still a little bit tight and a little bit up in the air at the moment. Anyway, more on that to come. Now,